हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इट्स पूजा पाठक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी फाइलम प्लेटी हेलमेंट्स सो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द जनरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ दिस फाइलम नो कमिंग टू द नेम द एज द नेम सजेस्ट प्लेटी हेलमेंट्स प्लेटी मींस फ्लैट हेलमेंट्स मींस वॉर्म सो दे आर जनरली दे आर नोन एज फ्लैट वॉर्म्स और मे बी वी कैन से द एनिमल्स विच आर प्रेजेंट इन दिस फाइलम दे आर देयर बॉडी इज डॉर्सो वेंट्रली फ्लैटन so they are known as the flat worms okay you can see here it is their body organization their body plan they have dorso ventrally flattened body means as you imagine imagine a leaf uh, which is flat from the dorsal surface as well as the ventral surface so we can say they, they are dorso ventrally flattened now habitat most of the organisms of this phylum they are endoparasitic endoparasitic means endoparasitic means they live inside the body of the another living organism may be animal may be human being so just because they are living inside the body it is endo and they are dependent on the other organism they are living as a parasite so the name is given endoparasite now coming to the body symmetry they are they have bilateral body symmetry as well as they are triploblastic organisms now coming to why uh, this uh, sorry i am going to explain it uh, through a diagram okay so now let's go to the diagram see they have bilateral symmetry means see here you can see bilateral symmetry means when an organism is present this is an organism you can see here this organism when any plane when any plane is passing through the this anterior to posterior from a central axis we can say or from the sagittal axis we can say the animal is divided into equal halves one part is this side one another is this side so this is known as the bilateral symmetry which this kind of animal shows okay now coming to the lateral symmetry ra sorry radial symmetry this is a radial symmetry which nidarians have okay nidarians cilentrates ctenophores even the hydra and all they have which kind of symmetry this radial symmetry this radial symmetry is like this is a principal axis which is a central axis sorry if any plane is passing through the central axis the animal is divided into equal halves from any plane if you are passing this from this plane this plane any plane then animal is divided into two equal halves so this is known as the radial symmetry and asymmetrical animals means see this is a animal which is which we can divide from any place it is not showing any kind of symmetry neither radial neither bilateral so just because of the presence of no symmetry in their body no symmetry in their body they are known as the asymmetrical animal so these are known as the now uh, bilateral symmetry as well as the triploblastic animal now coming to the this triploblastic animal see here we uh, we can see uh, during the course of evolution as i have already told in the previous uh, uh, videos that Uh, these animals these phylums how they evolved actually from uh, our evolution started from the primitive form and is uh, uh, means very small uh, forms then it started developing towards the complex forms okay they are very unique they are very simple form of organisms they are uh, started uh, moving towards the complex form and th this is how the evolution occurred uh, in our environment or we can say in our uh, on our planet so what happened when the course of evolution was going on during that course we have two germinal layers which is ectoderm and endoderm in the body so when the animal is uh, having see this is the the uh, when animal has this ectoderm as well as the endoderm in the body this ectoderm and endoderm in the body the animal is known as triploblastic sorry diploblastic but this presence of mesoderm layer when the animal is having one mesoderm layer this animal which has another third layer in the body they are known as triploblastic animal now coming to the mesoderm see this mesoderm uh, what it will do it gives rise to the coelom body coelom coelom means what it is a cavity students it is a cavity in which our visceral organs are kept okay in which our visceral organs are kept and these visceral organs are uh, present in the fluid filled cavity which is lining the uh, which is 
which is present in the cavity and have which is differentiated from the body wall so that cavity in which the all visceral organs are kept and it is divided uh, it is separated from the body wall so the body wall the cavity which is having a uh, layer of peritoneal layer which is lining all the insider inside cavity that peritoneum layer should be there as well as the mesoderm should be there as well as the visceral organs should be kept inside that fluid filled cavity these two terms uh, will decide the animal will be uh, the acylomate or silomate or uh, uh, pseudo silomate see this is the example of acylomate here we can see there is no such there is no such presence of any mesoderm so these animals are acylomates okay these are acylomates why because there is no mesoderm layer so no visceral organs are present in their body and that cavity is not forming so they are uh, having acylomates but this is eucylomate eucylomate means there is one cavity inside the body which is formed by the mesoderm layer which is differentiating that uh, sorry this is forming a cavity and which is inside that the organs are kept and that peritoneum layer is lining that cavity so they are true silomates or we can say the eucylomates in my previous video i have also told that which are the true silomates first true silomates so these are eucylomates and uh, you can see here see this is annelida mollusca arthropoda echinodermata and all chordates are eucylomates whereas flat worms are acylomate which i have already told they are acylomates okay so now coming to the next slide see characteristics now you you know the symmetry the body symmetry and siloms now coming to the segmentation see students segmentation they have pseudo metamerism and moderate cephalization cephalization means cephalic word is being mostly in the biological world it is used for the head part so here as i told you evolution is going on you know, previous to this phylum their animals they don't have civilization means the head is not differentiated from the other body part but in this phylum the civilization occurs but moderate not completely we can't say it, the head part is completely separate or we can, in most of the animals but yes the civilization started civilization means uh, what is head actually all the sense organs are kept in the head so head is a first thing uh, first uh, uh, means body part which uh, actually have the aggregate of sense organs which first sense the environment in which the individual or organism is entering so this just because of this reason civilization is important in the this uh, evolution or we can say in the evolutionary history it, it it is a great part now coming to the digestive system digestive system they have only one opening in their body that is mouth okay they don't have anus through which single opening only they perform both the functions like they perform uh, uh, means eating also and defecation also now special structure this is all very important they have hooks and suckers hooks and suckers students see uh, i will show you one diagram also they have hooks and suckers in their body see this is an animal which belongs to this phylum and it has hooks and suckers in their body now see this is the suckers okay they have hooks and suckers through this uh, suckers and hooks they will uh, just attach because they are endoparasitic in nature they attach themselves their body in the uh, in the parasite in inside which they are living so because they don't have hands and legs so they can't hold anything so just because to hold themselves tight in the body of any organism they have this hooks and suckers now coming to the another thing see student now coming to the another thing student now let's next slide see this is another semi, uh, another thing that they have special structures of, and they are parasitic form mostly this hooks and suckers will be found in the parasitic form only okay so parasitic forms they have hooks and suckers now coming to the another general characteristic of this animal see this is a planaria this is a planaria which belongs to this phylum and it has see it has nerve cord you can see they have nervous system also nerve cord this is nerve cord ladder like nerve cord is running here eye spot is there nervous tissue cluster this is a ganglia here present okay they have a gastrovascular cavity here you can see and bilateral symmetry as i have told you they have bilateral symmetry see you can divide this animal from one plane and it is divided into equal halves okay so this is a and they have only one opening this is the opening here and this mouth opening actually has pharynx long pharynx coming outside through which it will catch the food uh, to eat okay and this is flat you can see and nerve cord is there see before this phylum no organisms have a very uh, means uh, 
uh, they don't have actually brain they don't have ganglia they don't have brains they have just a uh, nerve net you can say diffused net you can say so they are specialized to nervous system also they have nerve net they have eye spots these are eye spots they look like eyes but they are not um, eyes it is rudimentary id we can say these, these are not eyes they they can't see they can't see okay they don't have this uh, visualization now coming to the another slide see this is the as we have already told about uh, the nervous system they have brain they have nerve uh, nerve cord they have ladder like system in their nervous system that will form the nervous system completely as we have central nervous system and peripheral nervous system and autonomous nervous system they don't have such kind of things they have but they have brain and nerve cord excretory system they have flame cells and uh, the osmo uh, they have flame cells flame cells now this is very important property of this platyhel means so many examination it is being asked that flame cells see flame cells this is an animal this is speciola hepatica these uh, actually this represent this green and red color you can see these are the flame cells this is representing the uh, flame cells and this is the suckers this is sucker sorry this is sucker you can see here oral sucker this is oral sucker here, here you can see oral sucker and this is acetabulum it is very important student there acetabulum one ventral sucker one oral sucker they have two suckers in their body two suckers the oral sucker and the uh, ventral sucker so this is acetabulum which is known as ventral sucker this is oral sucker they have single opening here single opening and they have excretory trunk also see can you can longitudinal excretory canal flame cells this is gonopore one more thing their sexes are not separate in their body you can't say the male and female in their body so they don't they don't we can't differentiate into the male and female so their sexes are not separate now coming to the points you can see here students the sexes are not separate they are monoecious and their fertilization is internal the fertilization will not take place externally they, it is internally development is indirect development indirect mean miracidium sporocyst and radian cercaria this is the larval forms students as we have studied in the nidarians the development is indirect with the planula larva in the uh, tino in sorry in the nidarians we have seen they have indirect development but the radial they have so many stages of larva okay they have so many stages of larva i'll show you how many larval stages you can see here see this is a larval stages see they have actually they have they have life cycle as i told you they complete their life cycle in more than sometimes in two animals also so this is a animal cattle uh, here and this is another animal so this is animals and they it is it's a, they are present inside these animals now you can see here this is the larva this is miracidium larva this is sporocyst larva this is radia larva this is cercaria larva these are the larval forms which is present in the body and this complete their life cycle like this only okay they complete their life cycle in two uh, uh, two animals so this life cycle of the this is the life cycle of fasciola hepatica now coming to the another uh, uh, slide student see now coming to the see one more important characteristic of uh, animal is that they show regeneration capacity regeneration capacity you can see here regeneration capacity is planaria it is very important it is sometimes match the column also it is being asked that regeneration capacity is seen in uh, mostly mostly not you can say yes it is seen in high uh, high degree of poly, uh, sorry regeneration is seen in planaria how what is regeneration property i'll show you see if the planaria if we will cut the planarial body into segments if we'll cut it in segment it will grow into another individual again if we will cut it the single every single piece will develop into an another individual so just this is known as the the um, uh, sorry the regeneration property and it is very unique property for the planarians okay now you understood students now coming to the here you can see the polyembryony one more characteristic is polyembryony polyembryony is like the polyembryony is also unique characteristic for the this phylum how there are two or more embryos developing from a single egg is known as the polyembryony when one uh, when two or more embryos developing when the two or more embryos are developing from a single fertilized egg one single fertilized egg give rise to 
two or more embryos so that is known as polyembryony it is a very important characteristic of the fasciola hepatica okay now coming to the classification there this class is divided into three sorry this phylum is divided into three classes which is known as the turbellaria larva sorry turbellaria trematoda and cystoda these are the three classes of this phylum turbellaria trematoda and cystoda they bear cilia and rhabdites they have mostly all flukes are included into trematoda all tapeworms are included into cystoda why tapeworms because their body is tape like okay their body is tape like now you can see here one diagram also tape like why i am telling this tape like see this is a tapeworm which look like a tape so just because their body is flat dorsally and ventrally and it it is look like a tape so it is given the name tape uh, tapeworm so now coming to the another examples of this classification see some examples are dugesia and convoluta are included into the turbellaria fasciola see liver flukes and blood flukes are included into trematoda cystoda they include the trinia solium echinococcus granulosus this is also included into the uh, this phylum now coming to the see students uh, this uh, phylum uh, you can see the proglottids ventral estabulum asexual sexual see one more thing asexual sexual reproduction is seen only in the uh, this uh, turbellaria class only okay but apart from that these two they have only sexual reproductions okay so uh, i have already told you about the suckers as well as the pseudo metamorphism see pseudo metamorphism is seen in this animal mm, how pseudo metamorphism body is not completely divided see proglottids are present in their body this is proglottids they are actually pseudo they are showing pseudo metamorphism they are not body is not completely divided into head abdomen thorax and all so they are known as pseudo metamorphisms so thank you students thank you so much and thank you for watching my video and uh, i'll not take it so long thank you